Hello guys, welcome back to the Syntho YouTube channel. Today I am sharing with you 22 things I wish I knew sooner. This is an ebook that I created and then I decided to turn it into a video and expand on all of the points. Everything inside of this will be useful if you make music and you want to take it to the next level. Enjoy the video and if you've got any questions or any topics you'd like me to cover, just pop them below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and I will hand you over to the presentation. Hey guys, welcome back to Syntho. My name is Josh Baker and today we are going through a little presentation. It's 22 things I wish I knew sooner. I've had some great feedback from a lot of these presentations that I've done. People say they want some more and I put some work in and created this cool ebook which I think you'll be able to download after this via a link attached to the video and yeah let's go so to begin with let me give you a bit of an intro about myself if you're new here my name is Josh Baker Manchester DJ producer I own Yumi Records and hide and seek and you now also know me for syntho I began my journey eight years ago I've been producing, DJing, partying, marketing myself online ever since, and I've learned a lot of skills. I've released onto big labels. I've DJed all over the world. Um, and yeah, I launched this platform, Syntho, in June 2020, and it's been an amazing experience. And I've been reflecting recently on the things I wish I knew sooner. So let's talk about them today. The first thing is being patient. There is not a race when it comes to making music. And if you look at DJs who have made it, a lot of them are not young. I'm 25 while recording this video. That is incredibly young in this scene. I don't know many DJs who are younger than me who have actually got a breakthrough. There are a few exceptions. Um, and a lot of them that you think are younger than me are actually older than me as well. Um, most of them are like 28. Well, not I'll say most of them. Same people I know that are young, they're still like 28. Um, no rush. I think maybe because you're being guided by me, you can start to feel a bit old because I'm young. But honestly, it takes a long time. And when you start to think things are going to happen for you, I kept saying every year, next year's my year, next year's my year, next year's my year. Now I think my time is starting to come in terms of DJing. But man, I thought this was going to happen. Like what's happening now? Like three years ago, honestly. Just be patient and you need to enjoy the process because if you're not happy now and you think that when you start getting gigs every weekend, you're going to be happy, that's not the case. Nothing really changes apart from you're super tired after the weekend, things like that. Uh, instead of partying on the other side of the decks, you're now just playing the tunes. And honestly, um, the way you live your life in the week still remains the same. So you need to make sure you enjoy the week. Um but yeah, if you don't enjoy it now, it's going to be very hard to make a career out of it. And if you're generally not passionate now about making music and you just do it because you think this is what you want to do, again, passion is always like the biggest advantage you can have over people because you can't really outwork someone who has got an incredible amount of passion. So make sure you really want to do this. And next is find a mentor. You're in the right place for that. You don't have to do it alone and to get good at anything in life. You want to find someone else who's been on the same journey because they will often teach you their mistakes. And I'm doing that right now. I'm kind of explaining um, a lot of the mistakes I made and put them into presentation. And you guys are already watching this, so you're already on that tip of finding a mentor. But doing it yourself can take a long, long time. Like it's taken me the part of nine years to get here. And so many the mistakes I've had been told at the start wouldn't have taken me nearly as long to do this. Practice makes permanent. This is something which is transferable to everything in life. And it's the key to getting better, really. If you practice over and over again, you will get good. And there is no real quick fix. And when people say, how long does it take to get good at making music? There's not really a time scale because it depends how frequently you do things and practicing more often. It's going to get you better. And I find that if I take gaps um, from producing, even if it's just two weeks, say I get caught up in the business side of things, I'm focusing on other things, writing this ebook, um, spending time planning high and seek, things like that, I get a bit sloppy on the old uh, music making. Things aren't as quick. 
things like that. So you want to keep practicing, especially at the start. I think doing frequent short sessions is better than doing irregular long sessions. I think it just keeps you in a better mindset, to be honest. And don't compare yourself to others. Music is subjective and everyone learns at a different pace. Instagram is the devil for everyone, I think, because we're looking around, we're seeing what the people are doing, and we think that, oh, no, we're not making progress quick enough. But in reality, everyone is at their own pace, and there is no need to rush, which comes back to the very first point. And, yeah, just be inspired by other people's progress. My motivation comes from the people around me all the time. When Local Dub make a great track, Alfie makes a great track, I think... Instead of thinking, oh no, they're doing that and I can't do that or whatever, I think like, that is a sick, sick tune. I want to make something as good as that. Let's go, you know? And flipping things on its head. If you see a mate who's got the promotion, got the whatever, look at that and think, that is energy right there. I think people call it big dick energy, isn't it? You know, like, like come on, let's get this shit. Um, and yeah, being able to channel that into something positive is... Probably, it's a bit of a skill, for sure, but it takes practice as well. But don't compare yourself to others in a negative way. Just use other people to inspire you. And this is an absolute belter. Checking on different speakers is so important. This is getting a bit more technical now. We've all been there when you export a track, and it just doesn't sound quite right. And the thing is, you just need to check other speakers. Check it in your car. Check on your laptop, check on your headphones, check on a Bose speaker. And when you start checking different places, you'll then start to realize what is working and what isn't working and things like that. And it can be a great way to learn how to mix properly because then you'll start to realize like, hmm, doesn't sound quite right that. For me, I know my KRK Rocket 8s really well. I used to always check my tracks on them. And yeah, even when you check other speakers, you're not guaranteed to get it perfect. But it's going to increase your chances. Little Bose wireless speaker is great to do it. A pair of AirPods. But if you just do that all the time, you'll get a much more accurate mix. And I'm still guilty of just doing up my speakers sometimes and not checking my headphones properly. But when I do, the mix is always significantly better. And here we go. You may have seen this on social media, but classic drum machines are the best. This is another tech one. And sample packs, there's hundreds of them now. Artists are making them. Everyone's fucking making them. But guess what? They're just getting a 909 or an 808 sample. They're putting effects on it. Usually losing a bit of sonic quality on the way. And then they just bash all these sounds together and put a sample pack out to make some money. I've done one under a different name. Trust me. You just bash it out really quite quickly. And then the distributors of the sound packs are making a fortune we won't go too far into this one but i would recommend going for the gold baby or samples from mars or thomas penton they are great sample packs and then process them yourself if they need processing i wouldn't recommend buying the beatport number one's latest sample pack that everyone's probably gonna buy and you can't really process them because they're already kind of over processed and you kind of stuck with the flat sound I'd get some nice 909 808s and do your own thing. And number seven, buying more sound packs isn't the answer. If you're stuck in a rut, buying more samples probably isn't going to get you where you want to be. You probably already have the samples. However, if you don't have enough samples or you've got none, then you probably do want to buy some sample packs. But buying a new sample pack probably isn't going to make you write a club banger. And here's an interesting one. I wish I knew this sooner. Using loops is not cheating. Yes, you heard that right. Loops get a bad rap. I'm not sure if rap, that kind of rap, is spelt like R-A-P or W-R-A-P. We're spelling it like a food rap there. Yes, they're unoriginal, but they can help you fill out grooves quickly and get ideas. If your drums are quite poor and they're missing stuff, just whack some loops in there, you know? Put some phases, put a filter on it, put a flanger... It has some really cool effects and it can give you some movement and it can get your track grooving. 
Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't use loops all the time, but as a tool to fill your track out, they can be really good. And I think I think if more people use them, their tracks would get better quickly and they'd also realize what they were missing in their drum groove. And also don't forget, you can recycle different parts of loops. You could use them as a one shot and a simpler and recycle them. And plugins exist. I spent two, three years with no plugins. I don't want you to start buying every plugin under the sun, but if you've got no plugins, then you need plugins because they sound significantly better and they are easier to find good sounds with. I've linked the Korg bundle there on the right. Korg is a really good bundle for the value for money and it sounds super organic. If you're after this kind of 90s house sound, the Korg bundle is ideal for you. Um, I was actually making really good tracks without any plugins, but then when I started to use plugins, it was another ball game and I made so much more progress. If you've got no plugins now, have a look around. You can go Native Instruments, Korg, Artoria, D D16, tons, tons of tons. And it's all about just finding the ones that work for you and then experimenting. But you need to invest really in these things and they will pay dividends in the long run. Kickstart, my favorite plugin. It's a side chain and it's used in a wide variety of music genres when effect is activated by an audio track. In other words, it's using an alternative audio source to trigger a processor. Yeah, it sounds complicated, right? But Nicky Romero's, uh, Romero's Kickstart plugin makes it super simple and you can manipulate a sound's volume to a 4x4 beat by turning a knob. So basically, it stops sounds getting in the way of the kick. It dips by a percentage and then your kick drum sounds nice and fat because you put the kick start on other elements in the track so your kick can come through nicely and yeah it's nine euros so go and get it don't over eq everything i did this for a bit and my track started to sound really thin and i couldn't quite figure out why and it was when i started to try and make these older sounding 90s tracks that i realized that hmm my snares are being way to thinned out as they say and things like percussion and i was finding that my drums were just sounding really like digitally thin crap and i was killing the mix essentially and yes you want to clear up the mud and the low end but anything past like 200 hertz you don't have to be as clinical with it and even with hi-hats, I was over EQing them and they sounded tinny, you know, and thin and harsh. And I think this is quite a giveaway of bedroom beats when we all know that you're meant to re EQ, but then because bedroom beat producers do it, they then over EQ everything really, really aggressively and it just ends up fucking your track up essentially. So bear that in mind when over EQing and keep a nice amount of the sound in there. Obviously, you want to get rid of the mud, but yeah. And then finding resonant frequencies is kind of counterintuitive to what I've just said. But correct EQing is what you want to do. Oh, let's go back. Um, how do we go back? There we go. So correct EQing you want to do is when there are horrible frequencies in the certain sounds. So you see there, if we boost an EQ, we can find the horrible frequency. Then we dip it the other way. So there, I've explained it. To do this, you can create a bell with your EQ and then boost the volume on different frequencies to find where the resonant frequencies lie. Once you find them, you can dip a few dB to clean up the mix. It may seem insignificant on one hat, but if you'll have horrible frequencies all the way through your channels, they'll accumulate and make a mess in your final mix. I wish I knew this sooner because even on snares, things like that, pads, um, it's really nice to just clean them all up and it'll make your mix sound much better. The power of sender returns. Anyone who's been a member of Synth, though, since the beginning will know that Josh Baker loves Send and Returns, and quite rightly so. They are when you can run multiple sounds through the same effect in your mix. So you don't have to put reverb on every channel, basically. And on Ableton, you can right-click, insert return track, and add any effect onto this. If you're using reverbs and delays, it's really good to use on there because you only have to load the plugin twice, and you send the audio signal to that channel and it comes back you want to uh use these to say cpu as well and if you're using reverb it keeps everything in the same space and sounds much better and in general if you want to know more about these go and watch some of the syntho videos as i'm using them all the time 
I think I've got a specific tutorial on these. If not, I will maybe do one. As I know I speak about them a lot, but maybe we could do something more specific. And this is an interesting one that I've really taken on board myself in the last two years or so. Trust your ears. Your ears are powerful. For a while, I would EQ stuff and it would sound worse, but that's what I thought I was supposed to do. This is about the subtractive EQing, things like that. If something sounds good, it sounds good. Ripping up the rule book can result in some amazing things. There's been so many times where I've made a track and it sounds mint, then I've actually released it and it didn't sound as good because then I mixed it down and I took out too many frequencies. I made things too thin, turned things up, turned things down because I thought that's where they should be by looking at the screen and seeing where the volume was peaking. But then I realized, um, yeah, trusting your ears is the way to go. Uh, it's good to reference between the two, but trust your ears. If you think your ears are right, just just go with them. Um, and be ruthless and experiment. Arranging in session view. To begin with, I was jamming in arrangement view. And yeah, Brandon actually arranges in arrangement view. So this is just me. But for me, doing it in session view, as you can see on the right, is so much better. I can work quicker. I write ideas down quicker. And in general, I just have much more fun when producing. And yeah, bonus tip, drink Iron Brew Extra if you are uh, trying to cut calories because there is only three calories in an Iron Brew. It's a diet one. Probably melts your brain though. So the one that we all know I love, referencing. This was the biggest thing, I think, out of everything. And it still makes me laugh. It doesn't make me laugh, but... People underestimate the power of it and how it can really give you insights into your music of what you're missing and all that kind of jazz. When implementing reference into my production process, I made a massive breakthrough. The principle of referencing is finding a track you like and directing the elements from the track and replicating the bits you like in your own project. Not only is it great for overcoming creative barriers, it also makes you understand what it is you actually like about that track, whether it be the drums or the synths or even the arrangement. Nearly every track I make, I'll always have a reference track. Inside Synth though, you'll see countless videos me explaining in detail how to do this. Honestly, the videos in Synth though on referencing are just gold because literally you're getting shown every part of the process. And you can ask for help mixing down. We all not mix downs on now. It's the final bit of your of the process of optimizing and combining multi-track recording to a final mix, basically just tidying up your track so then it's ready to play out. It takes a lot of time and practice to really achieve good mixes. But what I didn't know was it's actually a really common feat to pay an engineer to mix your music for you. It's especially good if you've got something that's better than you. <laughs> and yeah, if professional mix engineers are going to be better than you. It obviously isn't cheap, but you want to do this when you're releasing music on good labels, things like that. And yeah, people do sh mix days. You can go and pay for someone's time and sit with them in the studio. I did that in the years gone by. Um, but yeah, if I can get a mix 90% right and I know you need a bit of help, so what? I do most of my mixes myself, but I've got no shame in getting help with the mixes I can't quite get how I want to be. And if you're making really good grooves, it's really good to try and maybe get one track mixed down by some professionally. Oops. Just to see how good it is when the mix is pro and then you might realize that actually my tracks aren't that good or you might realize they're actually really good i actually my tracks weren't sounding great then i got some of the mix down and then they start to sound really good and that's when i signed for straight to rich next label got it mixed down by justin drake and that was an absolute game changer for me and then i realized how important mixing was and make mastering make sure music much louder when sending demos out Mastering is another area which you hear a lot. Mastering is the final process of taking audio track and preparing for distribution. Mastering basically just means louder, okay? I was just sending demos out for a long time without anything on the master chain, and they were dead quiet. And I was like, no one's interested in my music. It must be shit, blah, blah, blah. One day, I decided to send it to a mastering engineer and paid 20 quid for a master. At the time, I was super skint as well, so I couldn't really afford anything. Um, and it came back, and I was like, shit, that is an amazing track. And then I realized it was because I hadn't been getting my tracks mastered, they were just sounding flat and quiet. And when I got it mastered, it sounded amazing. And that was the track Explore, actually, which came out on C Double Luke Cazal's label. And yeah, you can get your tracks mastered by Rob Small for £12.50. So I'd advise going to do that. Googling notes in scale. 
on music theory is something people get quite fixated on when it comes to writing melodies. It scares them away and they're from writing melodies as they believe they need to have an understanding of music theory to sound musical. Arc I found was choosing a scale to work in, for example, C minor. Then you Google the notes and you can write the notes down on a piece of paper. And if you've got a MIDI keyboard in front of you, you can Google notes on a MIDI keyboard and you can even write down in a marker on your keyboard the notes. And that way you can start to figure out which notes you can play in the scale and then they'll harmonize. It's a real life hack. It makes things much easier. And yeah, you need to use musical elements otherwise your tracks are just going to sound like beats and bass. And yeah, that leads me to Don't Be Shy With Melodies. A lot of people just make beats and bass. If you want to stand out, go for some melodies. I want to make music that stand the test of time, so I think it's really important to have depth in there and melodies are important for that. 21. Buy hardware ASAP. I was put off buying any hardware for ages. I thought it was rocket science and out of my depth. I eventually bought the Korg Minilog with a USB connection and a quarter jack cable into a sound card, which could then be used like a software instrument. I can just send notes to the Korg. It's so easy. And I use this to write the PVP. If you're wondering about hardware to get, I'll be doing another ebook on that soon. And the last point is put some skin in the game. Parting with your cash is serious. And that's why when you do it, you're more invested in whatever it is. I know people love to crap plugins and all that jazz. But when you actually spend money, you commit yourself to the cause way more. I advise everyone purchasing Ableton, buying a few packs, getting a couple of VSTs. You don't need to spend a fortune, but if you're serious about this, I think you should make sacrifice and be prepared to invest in your future. A lot of things you can get 0% finance these days, which is handy. But trust me when I say it gives you a different level of accountability once you've invested. Guys, I hope that was useful. That is just a bit of information about 22 things I wish I knew sooner. If you like this kind of video, let me know because we can do some more of them. I've got some more kind of ebook style things in the works and I'll be able to explain them to you in more detail. Any questions as always, just hit me up directly. Catch you soon. Thank you very much for watching guys. Do not forget to check out the Syntho app. All the links will be below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Peace.